We'll look at the second Peter in chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Saviour Jesus Christ. So this is what we need to enter into heaven. We need the righteousness of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this can be given unto you today, right now, as you listen to this message. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, it's our responsibility to come to the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation. There's no salvation apart from Christ. If we want to be in heaven, we'll have to come God's way. And God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. We need the righteousness of God. You said to enter into heaven. Otherwise, we'll never ever be in heaven. We cannot be in heaven because of our sin. Our sins that have separated us, separated from between God and ourselves. And God wants to bring you back to himself. And as I stand here and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ unto you, you need to respond to him in the right way. Now you can just drive past and say, she'll be right, mate, it, but I'm all good, it's all good, and all this sort of junk. But it's not all good. And there is none good, no, not one. All our righteousness is the best we can offer to God are only filthy rags in the sight of God. And so we need to understand God is only interested in one person. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's interested in his finished work upon the cross. That work that was done upon the cross that no one else could take on. No one else could die on account of our sin. We see the Lord Jesus Christ dying, the perfect man, the only perfect man dying for us sinners. For us in sin, we've offended God. We've disobeyed the Lord. We've broke the commandments of the Lord. And because of that, we hang out the heaven. God does not want that to be my friend. And that's why I come here to bring you the message of hope and salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you believe on Him now? Would you put your faith in Him so that you can be in heaven? You know, there's no point going down the hell, you don't need to. You need to be in heaven. And that's where God wants each and every one of us to be. But we cannot be there apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, I'm here to tell you, there's only one way. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, um, that they, these believers have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God, and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You see, we know that the way we come to a knowledge of God is by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ that we can enter into heaven and that we can come to know God. We can have a relationship with God. See, you and I are flawed because of sin. We're heading down the hell, as I said earlier. And God does not want that for you. He wants your soul to be saved. He wants you to be with him for all eternity in heaven. But we cannot be there, apart from putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it's so essential to come to Christ. And you need to come to Christ now. Time is running out. There's no time to beat around the bush. There's no time to waste. You need to get right with God through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So it says here, Yes, according to his uh, divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. See, the believers, the Christians, have, the, have been partakers of the divine nature, of the nature of God himself, through faith in the Son of God, through faith in the one who loved us and gave himself for us upon the cross of Calvary. Can you say that today? That the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, 
these divine substitutes that took the sinner's place upon the cross of Calvary. And today, as you listen to this message, you need to come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. This is God's desire. This is what God wants. And so it says here, this is again with the Christians to believers, that whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, or through strong desire. That's what a lust is. It's a strong desire. So the corruption that is in the world is through lust, through our strong desires. Those desires that we have to do that which is wrong in the sight of the world. Now you and I don't have any real power over that. I know that, that, that sin is a choice, that's obvious. And so we have to make a choice every day whether we'll sin or not. But the point is this, if you've got some sort of a besetting uh, sin in your life, like a, a bad habit, you know, maybe it's drugs or whatever it might be, we're not really able to break that chain. We're bound by sin and Satan. We need somebody to break that chain for us. of Jesus Christ. They're the ones that have decided to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, come what may. And that's really what we need to do. It's not to get to heaven, but it's as a result of the fact that we have forgiveness for our sins. And this is what God wants for you right now, to give you the forgiveness for your sins, so that you can enter into heaven having your sins forgiven. Washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. God wants to uh, free us from the corruption that is in the world through lust or strong desire. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, that self-control, and to temperance patience and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, that's love in action. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour? And more importantly, does he know you? All you have to say, depart from me, you curse it into everlasting uh, fire compared to the devil and his angels. And basically, I never knew you. And it's very important that we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour, so that he can know us, so that we can become a child of God. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So this is absolutely urgent, it's essential that we come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can be in heaven. Cannot be, be in heaven apart from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. But, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And is that where you're headed? Into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, his kingdom has no end. There's going to be this, the... Uh, millennial kingdom, that's a thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ merging into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
that the Lord Jesus Christ will reign all of eternity. And he wants to be your king. He wants to be your saviour right now. Will you come to faith in Christ? Will you believe on him so that you can have forgiveness for your sin? He's the one who died on the cross, shed his precious blood for you and for me, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of our sin. This is available for you right now, my friend, through faith in the Son of God, who loved us enough to die upon the cross. Christ died for our sins, according to scriptures, and he was buried. But the third day, praise God, he rose again according to the scriptures. Is your soul saved? Are you heading for the eternal kingdom of our God? The eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, with Christ himself to rule and to reign forever and ever. His kingdom has no end, my friend. Not like the kingdoms of this world. You know, politicians and leaders come and go. They die. But our Lord Jesus Christ will never die again. Yes, he died once on account of our sin. For by one offering hath he, uh, for by one offering hath he perfected. I can't quite remember the verse there. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Those that are set apart for the use of God. By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become children of God on their way to heaven because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and their, their right response to that. So you will make a choice. When you hear the word of God preached like this, with the gospel preached, you'll make a choice. You'll either say, she'll be right, mate, I couldn't care less, whatever, and it's all a of rubbish, or whatever, or you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Don't neglect the salvation of your soul. Your soul is very precious unto the Lord. He wants to save your soul right now. Is your soul saved? Your soul can be saved through faith in the Son of God. What you need to do is come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it me or fit as long as I am in this tabernacle, in other words, as long as he is in that body, because we have a spirit and soul, that's the real you and I, inside of our body, which is like a shell. Our spirit and soul leave our body at the moment of death, but, he, but then where will we be? Where will you be one second after you die? Is he going to be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour? Or is he going to be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour? Yes, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle and other words in body, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavour that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honour and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. God was speaking from heaven, and this voice came from the excellent glory which is in heaven. This is my beloved Son. That's what the Father said about his Son who was on earth at that time. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He's never been able to say that about anyone else upon this earth. Only about his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God from heaven. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the mount, in the holy mount, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed 
ever be a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And so this is why we can fully trust the Word of God. Because the Word of God is divinely inspired. It's God breathed. As God said these things, men were guided by the Holy Spirit to write these things down. That's why we have the Bible, the Word of God. We can pick it up in our hands. We have a wonderful privilege of knowing the Word of God. The God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I wonder have you believed on him? Have you put your faith in Him? Need to come in repentance toward God. That should change your mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.